Bless Sabbath, sisters and brothers, to each and every last one of you, in the name of Jesus, I am Brother Julius, your teacher tonight. Welcome to another edition of the Israel, Israel of God's presentation of our Friday night prayer service. My reader, as always, is my brother in the faith, also from the Israel of God, headquartered here in Riverdale, Illinois, Brother Tanzel, and our super producer is Brother Sean. How you doing, Brother T? All right, yourself, my happy Sabbath to you, brother. Man, blessed Sabbath to you and your house in the mighty name of Jesus. want to greet everybody out there on YouTube, Facebook, and all other platforms of social media. And without further ado, uh, Brother Tezir, open us up with the reading of the law. Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. When you get it, my brother, let's go. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make it to thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor that stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. We read Exodus 21 through 17. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, my brother. Again, sisters and brothers, we thank you for joining us on this Friday night. And I always call this a tune-up for the lesson that uh, Brother Bowie will bring, and it's a tune-up for the, a lesson that the rest of the brothers will bring as they travel abroad. Again, I'm Brother Julius. I'll be your teacher tonight. Again, my reader is Brother Tenzel, and we pray that you had a good week, and we thank you for joining us again, and write down these scriptures, sisters and brothers. Tonight's lesson, tonight's lesson, beware. Angels are watching us. Beware, angels are watching us. Please subscribe, like, share, and post to the Israel of God, all of our platform sisters and brothers, including this one here on Friday night. Angels are watching us. They are created beings with, uh, I don't like to use the word supernatural. I would just say they are spirit beings created by God and they are superior in all ways to man. So this lesson is going to show us that I pray that we 
change our behaviors, and understand that nobody gets away with anything. Right. So the Lord got these angels. They are serving spirits created to uh, give a report, to deliver. They can also vex you only by permission of God. They cannot act. They all work for God, whether they are evil or righteous, but they all serve God in their capacity, sisters and brothers. What we want is the Lord's good angels or his hedges around us, sisters and brothers. And we want the evil angels to stay away from us, sisters and brothers. But our behavior dictates it all, dictates all of this, sisters and brothers. So put your seatbelt on. Let's go for a little ride. Nothing real heavy tonight. Just something to keep us in remembrance that, well, we're going to let the book tell you. Let's, do, let's look at what angels are. Bring your Bibles to Hebrews, the first chapter. Hebrews chapter one, Brother Tenzel, and we're going to start Hebrews at chapter one, and we're going to start this at verse one and work our way down. We're going to do some, a little bit of reading tonight, sisters and brothers, but hopefully we'll all get some understanding out of this, and hopefully before we do anything or even think about anything, understand there are consequences for our behaviors, whether they are righteous or rather they're wicked. Hebrews 1 and 1, my brother, let's go. God, who at sundry times and time divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the uh -huh. having these last days spoken unto us by his son. Yes. Whom he have appointed heir of all things, uh -huh. by whom also he made the worlds. Uh -huh. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and of holding all things by the word of his power. Yes, sir. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And this is what Jesus did after he got done, came and died for us, and went back and sat on uh, the right hand of the Father, sisters and brothers. How high is Jesus? Go ahead. Being made so much better than the angels. Uh-huh. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. How, how is he so much better than the angels? Because the angels are created. Jesus the Christ has no beginning, has no ending. Right. But the angels have a, a beginning. They are created beings. The book don't tell us when. The book don't tell us how. The book just called them spirits. Continue to read. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. This hold day. it, Denzel. Hold it, hold it. So let's take away this myth that Jesus the Christ is an angel. The book says the father never said to any of the angels, sit at my right hand till I make thy enemy thy footstool. Right. So therefore, Jesus the Christ is God. The Father is God. They share title. They share name. They share power. This the angels do not have. Read that again at verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, uh -huh. Thou art my son. Uh -huh. This day have I begotten thee. Uh -huh. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Now, the book do call the angels sons of God, but not in a sense at the same level as Jesus the Christ. They right. are sons of God, spiritual sons, just like in this flesh and blood body, we can be spiritual sons and uh, physical sons and uh, and daughters of, of Jesus or of God until we get our change, until we be literal sons of God in the spirit realm. Right. Verse six, go ahead. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten unto the world, he said, uh -huh. let all the angels of God worship him. And let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of, of God worship him. Skip down. Y'all highlight that right there. I want you guys uh, to highlight that, that verse right there. That verse six. Because we're going to go to a scripture and we're going to show you how all the angels of God. Because you got some angels out there that's, that all they say is holy, holy, holy throughout all eternity. But that's just one form of worship. But go ahead and read, Tazel, at verse 7. 
Now, look at what the angels are. Go ahead. And of the angels, he said, who make of his angels spirits uh -huh. and his ministers a flame of fire. So now angels are spirit beings and they can appear as ministers of flaming fire, but they are ministry. Ministry means to serve, sisters and brothers. His And another angels, he said, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers of flame of fire. We're going to show you an example of that before we're out of this lesson. But now look what he said to Jesus. Go ahead and read. But unto the son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Man, now, that's what he said about Jesus. That's what he said about Jesus. Verse 14, Tenzel. Look what the angel, uh, verse 13. He gonna tell you again. Go ahead. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. He never said that to any angels. So that bust that myth that Jesus is an angel. Right. No, Jesus is God. The angels are not God. They are spirit beings. They are serving spirits, whether they're righteous or whether they're wicked, but they are not God. Only G the Father is God and Jesus the Christ is God. If you don't believe that, go to Philippians 2 and 5. He'll tell you that. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Another lesson for another time. And right. another scripture that said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Because they share titles. Right. Verse 14, my brother. What are the angels? What are they? Are, are they not all ministering spirits? Uh-huh. Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Pay attention. Are they not all? All of them are ministering spirits, serving spirits. That's all that word means in that context. They are serving spirits, sent forth. They are sent. They don't come on their own. They are sent, right. sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's right. And that is us, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. That is us. Let me show you that that is us. Let's go to First John. First John. And look at the first John, the third chapter, Tanzil. First John. Let's look at the heirs of salvation because the Godhead, which is the Father and the Son, had a plan in the beginning. And the plan began at uh Genesis chapter 2 and verse uh Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 28. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over everything that I created, over the works of God's hands. So God, the plan of God is to make this man God. I don't believe you, Brother Julius. On your own, read Psalms, the 82nd chapter. Jesus told you God standeth among the congregation of the mighty. He judged among the gods. I have said that ye are gods. And then Jesus comes along in, uh, uh, in, in the flesh in Matthew and tell you, is it not written in your law that I have said that ye are gods? What is that? Heirs of salvation. Right. First John 3. First John 3, my brother. And pick it up by verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, uh -huh. that we should be called the sons of God. That we shall be called the sons of God. Satan the devil understood the plan of God because his name was Lucifer. He was a light bringer, but iniquity came upon him in his mind. He said, uh-uh. Oh, no. He rebelled against God, came down to the earth, and have wrought, caused man to sin against God. And, hey, Adam sinned against God by listening to the wrong one, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Continue to read. Therefore, the world know us not uh -huh. because it knew him not. Look what the Lord said. Look at his plan for us. Go ahead. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. That is if you love him and keep his commandments, you are, and that is by adoption. Right now, that is called a begetto. So now you are working on becoming gods. And as long as you keep his commandments, you're on the right track. 
but you can fall off that track because we flesh and blood, and in the right. flesh dwelleth no good thing. You got to stay with your God. We're going to read it. If you stay with him, he'll stay with you. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? Yes, go ahead. And it do not yet appear what we shall be. But? But we know that when he shall appear. Oh, when he shall appear. Go ahead. We shall be like him. We're going to be like him we, when he appear. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are dust. We are flesh and blood. And when we die, we go back to the dust. Everything we eat come out the ground, sisters and brothers. I mean, all of it come out the ground. The house you live in come out the ground. The car you ride in come out the ground. Mm -hmm. The oil in your car, the converted oil, which is gasoline, everything, the vitamin, the zinc, the, the iron, the copper, that's in your body. Everything comes out the ground. And when you die, you go back to the ground because dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return. Mm -hmm. But that's in the creation lesson. But yet the angels know this, but one rebelled. So now, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall we see, see him as he is. God is a spirit, St. John 4 and 24. We are flesh. We're made in his image. We're made in his likeness, but not out of what he's made out of. What he is made out of is called spirit. We are dust. That's why we are mortal, and this mortal must put on immortality. This mortal must put on immortality. So now... Mm -hmm. The book says, as we read, let all the angels of God worship him. Let's look at all the angels of God. Let's go to Psalm 103, Tenzel. Let's go to Psalm 103. Back up. Ain't nothing changed, sisters and brothers. The word of God don't change. That's why you have to tell the truth, because truth never changes. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. But if you tell a lie, you got to add or take away from it, because a lie changes. God right. don't change. That's right. Psalm 103. Give me verse, start at verse 19. Psalm 103, 19. Let, let's look at all the hosts of God of heaven worship God. Go ahead. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens. Uh, Psalm and, 103 and, I'm sorry, Psalm 103 and verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels. Ye his what? Ye his angels. Mm -hmm. That excel in strength. That do his commandments. That do what? That do his commandments. That listen to God. They get their orders from God. Go ahead, brother. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. <clears throat> yes. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. That do his pleasure, sisters and brothers. Angels are serving being, they're serving spirits, and they do what God say. If the Lord wants somebody, Deceased, okay, angel go to work. If he want, don't want somebody, if he wants somebody protected, uh-uh, angel protected. Don't let nothing happen. We're going to show you that because these angels are serving spirits and they are sent forth to minister unto us, the right. heirs of salvation. Mm -hmm. Because this world is subject to angel. Back to Hebrews, my brother. Back to Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Hebrews chapter eight. Tonight's lesson, beware, angels are watching us. Beware, angels are watching us. Hebrews chapter 8, we're going to pick this up at verse 14. Hebrews 8 and 14. Let's go, Tenzel. Hebrews 8. Um... Hebrews chapter 8 and pick it up at verse 14. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Hebrews, did I write this wrong? Oh, okay. I was trying to show you here that we are. We'll come back to that, my brother. Hebrews, let's go to Psalms, the 91st chapter. I'll come back to that. I miswrote this. Let me fix this here. I'll be back to that one. Okay. Psalms, the 91st chapter. These angels are working. Mm -hmm. They are working today, sisters and brothers. Psalm the 91st chapter of Tezel, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because these are mighty, mighty beings. 
Psalms 91, when you get it, go ahead. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place is the wilderness. Go ahead and read. I was saved of the Lord. Yes. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. But that's but you got to trust God, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. You got to trust God. Man, continue at verse three. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl. Yes. And from the noisy and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. And his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Man, go ahead, brother. Continue to read. Pick it up some. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Uh-huh. Nor for the arrow that fly by day. Nor for the arrow that fly by day. Sister and brother, we got a time on this earth called the Great Tribulation. And if you're not in the place of safety, you are subject to either taking a mark of the beast or going through the Great Tribulation. And it could cost you your life. Go ahead, brother. Another lesson, another time. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Yes. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Uh-huh. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Uh-huh. Ten thousand at thy right hand. Yes. But it shall not come nigh thee. Why not? Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Go ahead, Tenzel. Why? For thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy inhabitation. That's why you said at verse two, I will say the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Go, go ahead, verse 10. There should no evil befall thee. There should no evil befall you, sisters and brothers. Why? Go ahead. Neither, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. We ain't got to worry about, when you get to the wilderness, you ain't got to worry about COVID-19. You ain't got to worry about nothing, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. He gonna give what? His angels charge over thee. He gonna give his angels charge over you. Because they watching the system, but they watch over us. Whether you do good or whether you do evil, they watching over you. Go ahead, brother. To keep thee in all thy ways. Uh-huh. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Yeah. That thou dash thy foot against the stone. And unless the Lord got his protection around us, we wide open to Satan and his ministers and those that work for him, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. I believe this with everything within me, Tenzel. Sisters right. and brothers, I believe the book because mm -hmm. it's impossible for God to That's lie. Right. That's right. Impossible. Let's look at it. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus, chapter 23. Just uh, a few scriptures tonight. <laughs> Just a few scriptures tonight to give you a little confidence and understand. I know the gas price is high. The food prices is high. I understand all of that, sisters and brothers. God understands that. I know times is hard, but guess what? We are still here. We are still here. That's right. So now the only way you could deliver yourself from this untoward generation is to put your trust in the Lord and make him your shield and your, your buckler. That's right. Exodus 23, pick it up at verse 20, 10, 10. Let's go. Look what the Lord said to Israel. Go ahead. Behold, I send thee an angel before thee. I sent an angel before we. Didn't we read in Hebrew, they are sent? That's right. To minister unto the heirs of salvation. salvation. Mm -hmm. They're sent, sisters and brothers. Behold, I sent an angel before thee. Go ahead. To keep thee in the way. To keep you in the way. To keep you in the way. On your way, he going to keep you in the way. Right. Go ahead. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. So, man, how we going to get there, Brother Julius, Brother Tenzel? Don't worry about it. The Israel did not know that the Lord was going to open up a sea before them. Right. And I don't have it in there, but had an angel go before them in front and a pillar Man, a, a, a fire by night. Right. The cloud by day. A cloud by day, but it was mm -hmm. the angel of the Lord was up in there. That's right. And the Lord looking through the eyes of the angel. Mm -hmm. We're going to show it to you. Man, behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to the place that I got prepared. They're going to keep you in the way. You ain't going to the left. You ain't going to the right. That's right. You're going to stay on track and you're going to He's going to keep you in the way. Go ahead. 
Beware of him. Now, here's the flip side of it. Beware of him. Go ahead. And obey his voice. Uh huh. Provoke him not. Don't. Pro how do you provoke the Lord? By being disobedient. Mm -hmm. By being disobedient and breaking his commandment and falling into idolatry. Go ahead, T. For he will not pardon your transgressions. He he won't pardon your transgressions. It's not the angel. It's the Lord working. The Lord give the commandment to the angel. Watch over them. If somebody gets out of the way and they transgress, don't pardon them. Mm -hmm. The commandment came from God because they are ministry spirits. They do what they are told, sisters and brothers. Go ahead, Tenzel. For my name is in him. For my name is in him. But For my shit. name. That's mm -hmm. why you're baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, not the name is Jesus, be coming in the name of Jesus, which came in the name of the Father, Jesus. Jesus the Christ was sent by Jesus the Father. Right. Read that again, brother. Beware of him uh -huh. and obey his voice. Yeah. Provoke him not. Yes. Well, he would not pardon your transgressions. Uh huh. For my name is in him. For my name, because when you break the angel with the, the words that the angel is given to you, you are breaking the commandment of God, not the angel. Continue right. at verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies uh -huh. and an adversary unto thy adversaries. So what's going to happen? For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee, bring thee in into the Amorites, uh -huh. and the Hittites, and the Pezrezites, and to the Canaanites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Because anybody that's blocking you is blocking me. This battle is not yours, Israel. It's the Lord's. Our job as priest of God is to intercede for the nations of people and bring them to the God of Israel. Right. Then he tell Israel, you are my priest sent forth to bring light unto the Gentiles, but go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name mm -hmm. of the Son, and the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost is going to come in the name of them both, the name right. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Provoke him not for my, like the lady told me, how you know, brother, an angel is not a woman? Well, I've never read a female angel. I don't know what God got. I know I've never read that. Right. Provoke him not. I send an angel, obey his voice. Those are personal pronouns that belong to males. His right. voice. And what? Uh, and thou shalt not do it, I will cut them off. What else you cannot do before the angel? Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down to, to their gods. Uh-huh. Nor serve them. Uh-huh. Nor do after their works. Uh-huh. For thou shalt utterly overthrow them. Uh -huh. and quite break down their images. And what should we do to keep in line with God? Go ahead. And you shall serve the Lord your God. Serve the Lord, sisters and brothers. This is sometimes why our prayers don't get answered. Serve the Lord with your whole mind, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants your mind just like Satan wants your mind. Right. The Lord wants you mind. He told you, let this mind be in you. Mm -hmm. Then when you get the mind of God, you walk in his word and keep his commandments. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall do what? And he shall bless thy bread uh -huh. and thy water. Yes. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And I will take sickness from you. Mm -hmm. Look at this magnificent God. But did Israel obey? Let's go to Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, and look at it, Tenzel. Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, and look at it. We're going to pick this up at verse 7. I thank God that he made the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob unless we would not exist, sisters and brothers. And we've broken all the commandments, but yet the arm of the Lord is stretched out still. Mm -hmm. Praise God for that. Isaiah 63, we're going 7 to 10. Go ahead. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us. And the great goodness towards the house of Israel. Yes. Which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies. And according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Yes. For he said, surely they are my people. 
children that were not lying. Uh -huh. So he was their savior. So he was their savior. Go ahead, brother. And in all their affliction, he was afflicted. So he that touches you touches the apple of the father's eye. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the angel of his presence saved them. And the angel, that's one angel. And the angel of his presence saved them. Go ahead, brother. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He redeemed them. Go ahead, brother. And he bared them and carried them all the days of old. It was the, the Lord sent his angels to destroy Egypt. How? The book said by sending evil angels. angels. It was the evil angel that was bringing the frogs. Mm -hmm. It was the evil angel that was bringing the lice, the hot hailstone, the hot thunderbolts, the plagues, sisters and brothers, all 10 of them, until he broke Egypt. And then he said, I'm going to send you an angel to lead you in the wilderness. Oh, man. Watching over us. Verse 10, 10, 10, But they did. What did we do? But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. They vexed his Holy Spirit or they vexed his holy angel. Go ahead. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. Uh -huh. And he fought against them. Okay. Just like he did Saul. I'm going to take my good spirit from you, Saul, and an evil angel gonna trouble you. Right. Because the eyes of the Lord is watching all of us, sisters and brothers. The eyes of the Lord are watching us. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Proverbs, the 15th chapter. Proverbs chapter 15. Beware, sisters and brothers, the angels are watching us, whether you go to church or not. When you in your secret place, when you're doing your little sin, the Lord see us all, sisters and brothers. Chapter That's why one. the Lord said, can any hide himself that the Lord don't see? You got to be mindful, sisters and brothers. Like they say, a little birdie told, uh -uh, told on you. No, it was the angel of the Lord that told on you. Why? Because you got out of the way. Proverbs chapter 15, Tenzel. Proverbs chapter 15. And let's pick this up at verse 3. Proverbs 15 and verse 3. When you get it, my brother, go ahead. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Are uh, where? In every place. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Doing what, T? Beholding the evil and the good. Beholding the evil and the good. The Bible says the wicked think that they're getting away because that they, because the Lord is not judging us right away like we used to do back in the ancient days. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Nobody gets away. You get by. The Lord will let you get by until your sin reach up to heaven. And then he said, okay, I got to move now. Mm -hmm. Because this person refuses to repent. They refuse to hear correction. So... He has no choice. He told you that the commandments, you keep the command, honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Right. But if you violate those commandments, the Lord going to cut your days short. Mm -hmm. Because our breath and our life is in his hands. That's Read right. that again at verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Uh-huh. Beholding the good, beholding the evil, and the good. Now, let's go to 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter. Back up to 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter. Here a little, there a little, Brother Tenzel, sisters and brothers, so we can put this puzzle called the Bible together and get this big picture. 2 Chronicles, chapter 16. And this is what somebody thought that they was getting away with something. We're going to read a little bit tonight. We're going to show you that this person thought they was this king of Judah thought he was going to get away with something. Second Chronicles 16, pick it up at verse 1. Let's let's get into the story a little bit. I'll break it down and add a little when I, where I can get, it, get in, where I can fit in. Go ahead, brother. In the 6th and 30th year of the reign of Asa, Baashah, king of Israel, came up against Judah uh -huh. and went Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in into Asa, king of Judah. So Asa was king of Judah and Baasha was king of Israel. But Asa had a problem with Baasha. Continue to read that verse two. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasure of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Benahad 
king of Syria. And hey, that dad, that, uh -huh. that, that so he went outside and dealt with this king of Syria to come up against his brother Israel. Go ahead. There was a lead between me and thee, uh -huh. as there was between my father and thy father. Uh -huh. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break that lead with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. Man, why would you do this? Go ahead. And Benadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. Uh -huh. They smote Ion and Dan and Abel Mam and all the store cities of Naphtali. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Baasha heard it that he left off buildings of Ramah and let his work cease. Then look what Asa did. Now, Asa was a good, he started out good, but he allied himself with the king of Syria, Ben, ben Adad. He shouldn't have done that. Continue to read. Then Asa, the king, took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Bethshah was building, and he built there with Jeba and Mizpah. Uh-huh. Now, now the Lord is going to intercede. Go ahead. We go on somewhere with this. Follow me. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Hananiah the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God. See, <laughs> it's a terrible thing when you go outside and deal with other nations before you deal with the king of Israel, even Jesus the Lord. Right, right. you got to be careful, sisters and brothers. The book says, put not thy trust in man in whom there is no help. Right. Trust the Lord. Because you have relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Mm -hmm. it's another story for another time, but it plays into this. Skip down to verse 9. You thought you was getting away, Asa. See, there are prices to pay for disobedient, being disobedient. Verse 9, go ahead. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Did we just read that in Proverbs 15 and verse 3? The eyes of the Lord in, in every place, beholding the evil mm -hmm. and the good. Mm -hmm. The Lord got his angels watching you. I, I, I'm going to do this right here. Don't nobody know about it. But the Lord see it. He got his angels, sisters and brothers. Yeah. That's why he has a book of life, which is also called the book of remembrance. With your page and your name on it and my name on it. You can have your name in the book, but your behavior can have your name. You can get yourself blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. Man, for the eyes of the Lord, at verse 9 again, brother. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. To do what? To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Ooh, go ahead, brother. Hearing thou hast done foolishly. Uh -huh. and therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. Man, just like David did foolishness. And David didn't have no peace in his house the rest of the day. He thought he was getting away with it by messing with Uriah's wife. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. The Lord was angry at David for what he did. Yes, he repented. But he had drama in his house the rest of his days. Yeah. Now, instead of Asa repenting, look what Asa did, verse 10. Then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. Uh -huh. And behold, the acts of Asa first and last. Lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. That's why we don't need no lost books because we got the books right here. Mm -hmm. Continue at verse 12. Look what happened to Asa. Nobody gets away. Nobody gets away. You can't die and get away from God because he's going to wake you up. And if you die, and think about it. You carjack someone. You have an accident and you kill the person in the car who helped you. And then both of y'all die in your sin. Right. You're going to wake up to the great white throne judgment because you're not going to be in the first resurrection and then the Lord is going to kill you forever that you can't die in a place called a lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that evil spirit was leading you to do what you did 
Because the Lord said, thou shalt not steal. But you steal, you have stolen, and you have murdered, and you think you're going to get away? Uh-uh. The book said, verse 9 said, for the eye of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong. But he also told you in Proverbs 15, the eyes of the Lord <laughs> are in every place beholding the evil and the good. The mm -hmm. Lord is watching you, carjacker. Right. Adulterer. Thief. Mm -hmm. Sodomite. The Lord is watching us all, sisters and brothers. Right. That's why the Lord said, keep your garments always white. Look at this. And verse 12, watch this. And Asa, in the 30th, ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet. Uh-huh. And so his disease was exceeding great. Yes. Yet in his disease, he sought not to the Lord. All he had to do was say, Lord, forgive me. I have done wickedly. Take this. Then the Lord, then we read the Lord said, if you keep my commandments, I will take away your diseases. Yes, right. He was diseased in his feet. But instead of repenting, he hardened his heart. The book said, yet in the disease, he sought not to the Lord, but what? But to the physicians. Sisters and brothers, the medicine is right here. That's right. This is the bomb, the healing medicine for a sick and dying world. The word of God. The book said he sent forth this disease, his word and it healed them. Asa would not be corrected. Mm -hmm. That's that pride. But God got the final judgment. Mm -hmm. Man. So eventually you read the rest of it. He died and the apothecaries buried him. They put all kind of perfume on him and everything. But the bottom line is there is a price to pay because the angel is watching over you at verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole oh, earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Let's go to Job, the first chapter. Job chapter 1, Brother Tenzel. Because you, when you read this book, the more you read this book, the more you find out that it is spirit, just like the book, just like the Lord said in John 6 and 63. John 6, 63 said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Save yourself. Read the book. Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for remission of sins, sisters and brothers. Man, Job chapter 1, pick it up at verse 1 and let's go. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. Yes. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God. He was what? He was perfect and upright. Didn't we read that? The eyes of the Lord? The book said, be careful who you entertain because some have entertained angels unawares. Go ahead and read it. Finish it. And one that feared God and is true with evil. And is true evil. Look what he had. Go ahead. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. That's ten children. That's ten children. Skip down. He had a great host. He had cattle, oxen, and everything. Man, man, sisters and brothers. Look at this way. For the sake of time, uh, look what Job did at verse five. And it was so. When the days of their fe feasting were gone about. Uh -huh. And Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. So now, remember, be careful who you entertain. The eyes of the Lord are in all places, going to and fro in the earth, watching over them. Go ahead. Now, there was a day. When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, these are the righteous angels who did not rebel with Satan and his angels. But yet, look who came with them. Go ahead. And Satan came also among them. All angels. Whole bunch of good angels. And Satan came with them because they got to give a report. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Yes. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro into the earth. Wait a minute. This is the third time that we read where the angels go to and fro in the earth. You cannot see them unless they show themselves. You cannot kill them because they spirit beings. They can't drown in the great flood of Noah because angels are spirit. They don't die. Right. 
but they all serve God because they are all ministry spirits. Go ahead. And from walking up and down in it, uh -huh. and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? Yes. A perfect and an upright man. Uh-huh. On that fear of God and it's true with evil. What makes you perfect and upright? If you love me, do what, Tenzel? Keep my commandments. That's what leads you to perfection. Mm -hmm. Only God is perfect, but that is what's going to make you perfect, sisters and brothers. The commandments, the law is a light unto my feet. Man. Verse, verse 9, continue. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, do Job fear God for no? What do the angels do? They go to and fro in the earth, checking us all out. He look what look how look how smart Satan is. Go ahead. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? If you love him and keep his commandments, he will send his good angel. And it will protect you, sisters and brothers, just like Psalm the 91st chapter. Mm -hmm. He'll protect you. He'll protect your children. He'll protect your car. He'll protect your house. He'll protect your job. He'll keep the bullet that's meant for you away. He'll keep you out the accident. Man, say the devil know this, but he can't mess with you without permission. Right. He can't operate unless he's sent. Right. He operate by permission or commandments. Didn't we read in the Psalms, all the angels worship him and, and do his commandments? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Man, verse 10 again. Has not thou made a hedge about him? Yes. And about his house? Yes. And about all that he have on every side? Thou have blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Because he was the greatest man in the East. Ten children. His, his daughter's blessed. His sons are blessed. He got cattle. He got sheep. He got goats. He got very much cattle. The richest. Man, he was the great man of all the men of the East. That's what the book said. Mm -hmm. How do Satan know this? Because he go to and fro checking you out. The devil and his angels are professional walkers. Right. You can't hide. The book said he see our secret sins. He, you can't hide. You don't believe it? Ancient tried that in the days of Joshua. It didn't work, did it? Got mm. him and his whole family stoned and burned. Mm. Come on, Tenzel. What verse? Verse 11. Read it. But put forth thy hand now. Now, this is a request that the devil is asking God, that the angel is asking his creator. Put forth thou thy hand, Lord. Go ahead. And touch all that he have, uh -huh. and he will curse thee to thy face. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he have is in thy power. Uh -huh. Only upon himself, put not forth thy hand. And when, 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 and when he was doing that, and when, remember, the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. Hence the word Satan, Abaddon, son of destruction. Mm -hmm. He said. And Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. But it's the devil working <laughs> through. He's a straight up killer. Right. Got his children, left the closest thing to man. Man's best friend is not dog. Man's best friend is woman. Mm -hmm. Man. But Job was an upright man. Man. And look what Job said. And this is what we got to come to the understanding. Verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. And still worship. Go ahead. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we say that? Mm hmm. I know people that curse God when they lose their son or their daughter or their loved ones. I never go back to, I never call upon the name of the Lord. God took my death. I lost too many people in the pandemic. We have forgotten that all souls are 
his. That's right. The soul of the father is his, so also the soul of the son is his. The earth is mine, saith the Lord, and the fullness thereof. I will have mercy on whom I will, and I will take whom I will. Just because they die don't mean they're lost. Right. Read Isaiah the 57 chapter verse 1 and 2 on your own. Just because somebody dies don't mean that they lost. But in all this, we got to understand, we didn't bring nothing into this world, and we can't take nothing out. Right. Learn the attitude of Job. Job said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord has given, and the Lord has taken away. That's right. Blessed be the name of the Lord, because I still got my breath. Verse 22. And in all this, Job saying not, nor charge God foolishly. But let's learn something else. Let's do it again. Come on. Chapter 2, verse 1. Quickly, Tanzania, a little faster. Go ahead. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Uh -huh. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Because the book said that the devil will leave you for a season. Mm -hmm. Just because you overcame don't mean that that's the end of it. Jesus said it this way. He that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So the Lord can deliver you out of a situation. But then Satan can come back and visit you again to check you out. See if you're still on your square, sisters right. and brothers. Go ahead at verse 2. His MO does not change. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from yes. walking up and down in it. Yes. And the Lord said, no walker, Another time, because he's constantly checking you out. Mm -hmm. He'll leave you for a while, go mess with somebody else, but then he's going to come back because that's what he does. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, uh -huh. a perfect and an upright man, uh -huh. one that fear of God, and if you of evil, uh -huh. and still he behold, he beholdeth fast in his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. Without a cause. But Job is an example for us to have faith, no matter what, no matter what loss. Have faith, sisters and brothers. Right. The book said this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Go ahead, T. And Satan answered the Lord and said, uh -huh. Give for skin. Yeah. yeah. All that a man will have will he give for his life. How do he know that? Because a man will try to pay to save his life. How do Satan right. know that? Because he don't put him to the test. He don't put him to the test. How? Why would he make a statement if he don't know about it? Because he done doing the, the course of time, he's checked everybody out. He done put people in all kinds of situations to see if they're going to serve God or if they're going to fall. Mm -hmm. And Satan answered the Lord <laughs> and said, skin for skin, yeah. All that a man hath will he give for his life, to save his life. Verse 5, go ahead. But put forth thy hand now, uh -huh. and touch his bone and his flesh. Yes. He shall curse thee to thy face. Yes. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, uh -huh. and save his life. Yes. So when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, it smote Job with sore balls from the So he could touch Job at first. At first the Lord commanded the devil, don't touch him. You, everything he got is in your hands. His right. children, his house, his cattle, his service. Everything is in your hands. Don't lay a finger on Job. Now, you can touch him. Right. What did the Lord say? He Read said, that again. So when, so when uh, behold, uh, the Lord said, say, behold, he is in thy hand. Yes. Save his life. Uh-huh. So he went, so he so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Because he is a professional killer. He wants you to suffer. He knows that you are an heir of salvation and Satan is antichrist. He wants to kill all of God's creation. All of them. Man. And he scraped himself. 
and his wife loved her husband and she didn't want him to suffer no more. Look what Satan put in her mind. Be remember, give me, <laughs> give me in his hand. I'll make him curse you to your face. Mm -hmm. So he worked through people. Sisters and brothers, you're looking at the co-worker that's doing you wrong. The mother, the father, the son, the daughter that's doing you wrong. You're not looking at the spirit that's driving them. Right. Job looked at the spirit and that drove. The, Job understood this. What did he say at verse 9? Then said his wife unto him, Do thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. The Lord said, Satan told the Lord, I'll make him curse you to your face. So he can do work to make Job do it. So I'm going to give him man's best friend, which is his wife. Right. And what did she say? Exactly what Satan wanted her to say. Go ahead. But he said unto her, thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speak. Uh -huh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? The eyes of the Lord in all places and are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Because the Lord can no evil happen to you unless the Lord allow it. The Lord said he has a day of trouble for the wicked. Man, what? Shall we receive good at the hand? And this is what we got to understand, sisters and brothers. Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord? So now when God is blessing you and you have a nice roof over your head, a nice beautiful home, a nice shiny car, money in the bank, oh, praise the Lord. But time drama hit, man, man. Then you're going to curse God. He is not like us. We have to love him in good times and in bad times because our whole life is a big old test. Right. To see right. whether we will overcome. That's why the Lord gave you the commandments. I set before you the commandments, whether you will obey God or no. What do we say, Israel? We said all that the Lord has said we will do. Yeah. Now you got a brother going to come to me and tell me it's 613 laws in the Bible. I said, but you done broke 10. What you going to do? You going to break 613 now? <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. So now. At the end of the day, at the end of the Job's trial, because we all go through trials and tribulations, the Lord restored him back his children and gave him double of what he had because he was a perfect and an upright man, one that eschewed his evil and feared God. Right. Let me show you somebody else that feared God. Let's go to Zechariah. Let's go to Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. Stay with me, sisters and brothers. We're going somewhere with this. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5, Tenzel. Luke 1 and 5. Stay the course, sisters and brothers. I know, and I know things is rough out here. I know things is ugly and wicked it surrounds us. But the Lord got it all written. It's all written. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Right. Remember. Remember, it's all a big test. I just want to hear them words, Tenzel. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Man, Luke 1 and 5. This is, remember, remember, the Lord, look what the Lord said. Go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the yes. court of Abiah. Uh -huh. His wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Yes. And they were both righteous before God. Yes. Walking in all the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord blameless. Yes. And they had no child. Now, that if, the book says, child. if the book says they were righteous, they were righteous. Yeah. What makes you righteous if you love me? Keep my commandments. Come on, Tezel. Go ahead. And they both were now well stricken in years. Yes. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the ordinance, yes. of course, Yes. According to the customs of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Man. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. Uh-huh. 
and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Who was it? An angel of the Lord. Go ahead. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Uh -huh. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Uh -huh. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And where did the name John come from? Heaven. It came from heaven, didn't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. But he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, uh -huh. and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Uh -huh. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even, uh -huh. even from his mother's womb. And go ahead. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Yes. And he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elias. Of Elijah. Go ahead. And turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to the disobedience to the wisdom of the just. Yes. And make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now watch this system, brothers. The angel had already been sent from heaven to Zechariah and Elizabeth with a message. And because they had a prayer, and the prayer was, you're going to have a son. We want a son to continue the lineage. Go ahead and read. And Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Go ahead. And the angel answered, said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. Didn't we read? Didn't we read Tenzel? I sent an angel to keep you in the way mm -hmm. and obey his voice. Mm -hmm. The angel of, and then we read in, in, uh, 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 in Isaiah the 63rd chapter that the angel of his presence saved him. Mm -hmm. Now we got us a name. I am Gabriel that do what? That stand in the presence of God. Yes. And am sent to speak unto thee and to show these these glad tidings. And because you don't believe the angel, because the angel is always watching, they know what's in your mind. Go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and I'll be able to speak unto the day that these things shall be performed. Uh -huh. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Oh my gosh. Because you believe not the words <laughs> that came forth. So now skip all the way down to verse 59. And go ahead. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias. And they called uh, his name Zachariah after who? After the name of his father. But that's not the that's not the name that was came from heaven. Right. You're gonna do it God's way, sisters and brothers, or else you're gonna pay the price. Zacharias didn't believe him. The people called his name Zacharias after the name of his father. Go ahead. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he should be called John. Go ahead. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. There is none of your kinfolk that are called by this name, John. No, no, no. Obey the angel's voice and do all that I speak, because the angel is speaking on behalf of God. Right. Go ahead and read. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. Uh huh. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And then when you be obedient to God, look how doors open. Go ahead and read. And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. Man, verse 67, brother. Go ahead. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Bless All that Lord. doubt is gone. Mm -hmm. All of that doubt is gone. Mm -hmm. Because the angel of the Lord, when the Lord sent the angel, obey. That's right. Obey. Asa didn't obey. The, the, the angel of the Lord hit him in his feet with the disease until he died. Mm -hmm. You got to obey. To obey is the better this better the sacrifice. If right. you obey, you don't have to pay the penalty. Right, right. You don't have to pay the penalty. Check this out, Matthew the 18th chapter. Check this out, because I'm looking at these children and what these people are uh, doing to these children and uh, 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 going uh, abusing and sexually abusing these children. And I mean, it's just wicked in the world, sisters and brothers. 
to the fullness. Matthew, the 18th chapter, Tenzel, and we're going to pick this at verse, uh, they're asking Jesus, and Jesus is going to give them more who's the greatest. Start at verse 1. Let's get, let's get it. Go ahead. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? I don't care. What I care about is being on the right side of the kingdom of heaven. Right. Go ahead and read. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Yes. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have to repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus. You have to be converted. This flesh and blood mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You right. have to have a change of mind. Mm -hmm. You have to have, man, you get the you change the physical mind, and then this book is gonna cause you to have a spiritual mind, and then the Lord gonna give you a spiritual body to match the spiritual mind at the appointed time. Right. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the middle of them because they want to know who's the greatest in the kingdom of God. He mm -hmm. took a little child. He said, except you be converted and become as little children, you should in no, not enter into the kingdom of God. Little, what kind of, what is a child to God? Go ahead and read. For whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. But what did he do? What, 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 did, what made the little child humble? He called the little child, and the child came to him. Right. If you love me, keep my commandments. Your ways are not good enough. My ways are not good enough. Only God's ways are righteous, sisters and brothers. Right. And the angel is beholding all of this. Go ahead and read. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receive me. Because a child is humble, is innocent, and then you corrupt them. Mm -hmm. And you think you're going to get away? Absolutely not. Right. Go ahead and read. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. That's why the Lord tell you in 1 John and 2 John and 3 John, little children, little children, we have to be children in the mind and sense of being obedient right. and humble. Right. Not rebelling against our parent. What parent? The father and the son. Mm -hmm. Do what he say so I won't have to take you to the woods there and whoop you. Right. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me. Go ahead. It were better for him that a millstone be hanged about his neck and that he would drown in the depths of the so sea. So. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to the world because of offenses. Uh-huh. For it must needs be that offense come. Uh-huh. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. You want to break my commandments? You are offending me. Now I got to hurt you. Woe is not good, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Be careful that you despise not one of these little ones. Go ahead. For I say unto you uh -huh. that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face what? of my father. Which is the angels father. are doing what? They beholding the They're face watching. of my father. The children got an angel. Mm -hmm. And you're going to abuse a child. And then you're going to take a child. And then you're going to murder the child. To fulfill the lust of your flesh. Or the, the thoughts of your mind. Which is led by Satan mm -hmm. the devil. The Lord said that in heaven, their angels, their angels do always behold the face of my father. Oh, my gosh. Which is in heaven. Oh, my gosh. Man. Verse 14, Tenzel. Go ahead. Even so, it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Because there's a special place in the heart of God for children because they're innocent. Mm -hmm. Because they're innocent, sisters and brothers. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We gotta go, we gotta go to Acts the first the fifth chapter. 
Be careful who you entertain, for some have entertained angels unaware. Unaware means that you're not aware that the that, that being is beholding you. Right. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. When you get it, brother, start at verse 1. Come on, T. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So they made a vow that they were going to sell some property and take the money and give it to the apostles for the dispersion to the people of the church. Go ahead and read. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled the heart? What? <laughs> why would he mention Satan here? Right. Because just like the angel of the Lord is on the right hand side. Satan the devil is on the left hand side watching you. On TV, they do the little angel, the good angel on the right, and the evil angel on the left. Right, right. But Peter said, Ananias, why has who, Tenzel? Why has Satan feel their heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? What? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Go ahead. While it remaining, was it not thy own? Yes. And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? So why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart, that thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? Because the eyes of the Lord are in all places. You made a vow, and you made a vow before God, and so therefore the angel was watching. Mm -hmm. His Holy Spirit. And his unholy spirit, which is Satan the devil, is also watching. Mm -hmm. Why has Satan Feel your heart or feel your mind to lie to the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Come on, T. And the young men arose, winding them up and carried them out and buried them. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came uh -huh. in. Uh -huh. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Uh-huh. And she said, yeah, for so much. Yeah. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Just like the woman was away. Her husband at home dead. But that wasn't the end of it. The Lord, the book told you in the Ten Commandments, in Exodus the 20th chapter, in no way pardoning the guilty. Mm hmm that's why you got to be well, because the angels are watching us. There was a time in my life I thought I was getting away with something. The payback came. And all I could say was, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. Because you don't get away. Sin is selfish. It is about me, myself, and I. And you don't get away. Payback is coming. So, and you know when you're doing wrong, you just think you ain't getting. No, you think you're not getting away. The book said uh, people do wrong and think they gonna get away with it because right. judgment is not executed speedily. No, no, no. You can get away for a long time, but you don't get by. Payback is coming. That's why I always ask the Lord if I have sinned, pay me back now, because I don't want that make a fire, Tenzel. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Uh -huh. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. Uh -huh. the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And buried her by her husband. And when these are, these are examples for us, sisters and brothers, not to tempt the Lord our God. Don't tempt the Lord your God. And he won't have to hurt you. Skip down. Let's go, my brother. Let's go. Uh, 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 let's go to uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter. Revelation, the fifth chapter. Revelation chapter five. And pick it up at verse 11. We got two scriptures right there. Pick it up at verse 11. Revelation five and verse 11. When you get it, go ahead, brother. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand, ten times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. That's an innumerable amount of angels. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. These are holy angels here. All the one third is on the earth. Go ahead. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Didn't we start this off with let all the angels of God worship him? Mm -hmm. Look what they're saying. But then he got some angels on the earth holding back World War III. Mm -hmm. Revelation, the seventh chapter, and pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, uh -huh. holding the four winds of the earth. Yes. That the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, this is not the wind that blow. This is the nation, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. The nations. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, uh -huh. to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So that's how the Lord is going to hurt the earth and the sea, just like he hurt Egypt by sending evil angels among them. Right. Oh, go ahead, brother. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. In their foreheads, sisters and brothers. Oh, my goodness. So therefore, the Lord got angels holding back mm -hmm. World War III until he had protected the ones who he wants to protect, sisters and brothers. And mm -hmm. this, we got to understand it. But let's look at how all this stuff began. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. When you get it, go ahead at verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Yes. And prevailed not. Uh-huh. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. So, sisters and brothers, they cannot get back to the third heaven, which is the heaven of heavens. The evil mm -hmm. angels cannot go back home. Right. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. That means that an innumerable amount of one third or whatever one third number of angels were cast out with Satan the devil that rebelled against God. Go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Yes. And the accuser of our brother is cast down, which accuses them before our God Day and night. Yes. And they overcame him. Hold on a minute. Which do what? Accuse them before our God. Day the day devil is night. an accuser. Mm -hmm. He's an accuser. When you see somebody that's always accusing somebody of something, now you know what spirit they're operating in. They don't recognize it, but you do because you read the book. He is an accuser. Go ahead. He did it up in heaven, and you think it's going to stop now on the earth? We're right. going to show it to you. Go ahead, brother. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb uh -huh. and by the word of their testimony. Yes. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Go ahead. So therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Ye rejoice your heavens. That the, that's, the, that's the earth system, brothers. Go ahead. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth uh -huh. and of the sea. Yes. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Rejoice, you heavens. Rejoice, you heavens. That's the third one, all of, the third one and the first one. Because mm -hmm. everything above the ground is the second heaven to as far as the galaxy go. But the heaven of heavens, no man can see or go to, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, that ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Because devil got kicked out of heaven and all his angels. The drama is not up in heaven. The drama is on the earth. Go yeah. ahead. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. You. Why? Having great wrath. Because he knows that he had but a short time. Now, a spirit being that lives forever, that don't matter unless you know you got a, a set time of punishment. Right. Go ahead, brother. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, uh -huh. he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Uh-huh. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. 
Uh -huh. As you may fly into the wilderness. Psalm 91st chapter says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. This is yet future, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Because Satan is still here. He's still working. But skip down to verse 17. Go ahead. And the dragon is wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This woman is the church, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. You got two churches in the book of Revelation. You got Satan's church and you got the Lord's church. The Lord is married to wives. The Lord is married to Israel, his church, his wife, and Satan has a church headquartered in Rome. Right. That's which right. is his wife. So now the dragon was wrong and went. So now he got kicked out of heaven, woe into the heaven of the earth. Let's look at the woe. All the way back to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. We're going to land in this area. We're going to land in there in this area. Genesis chapter 2. And pick it up at verse 7. When you get it, go here. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, look at verse 15. Go here. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord, man, go ahead and read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Uh-huh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Jesus is the tree of life. How do I know? Because St. John 3 and 16 said, Behold, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But you could have ate of the tree of life. Our mother and father, Adam and Eve, didn't eat of the tree of life. They disobeyed the tree of life. They disobeyed the word of God which is Jesus, and ate and listened to the words of the dragon. Mm -hmm. Now, go to chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead, quickly. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. He said unto the woman, Ye have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. What are we doing reading about this serpent from Revelation back to Genesis? Right. Because Revelation happened before man was created. And so now the devil is in the garden because he was kicked out. How did he get to the garden of Eden? He was kicked out into the earth and his angels with him. Right. Now he's beholding God with his creation and standing right there waiting on his opportunity. Now the opportunity is here. Go ahead, brother. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yes. But of the, tr uh, but, uh, uh, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, he should not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Apples and oranges don't make you wise or unwise. It is knowledge that makes you wise or unwise. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go ahead, brother. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. But the Lord said, you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. This is a fallen angel talking to her because he watching, he waiting, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's why the devil said he understood the plan of God. Genesis 1:26 through 28. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Oh no, no, no. I got to serve this dirt mm -hmm. that you gonna make God? Mm -hmm. Oh heck no, I'm rebelling. <laughs> got kicked out, lost the battle, and got kicked out. Oh, my gosh. But we didn't listen. We ate of the tree. We listened to his doctrine. And look what happened at verse 19. Go ahead, brother. In the sweat of thy faith, thou I'm, I'm sorry. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Just like the serpent beguiles us. And when we follow him, no good can come. The devil cannot offer you nothing but death. Mm -hmm. That's all he can offer you. So stay away from him, sisters and brothers. Eat the tree of life, even Jesus and live. So because of that, 
The punishment is thus you are and thus shall you return. Man, come on, man. Let's go to Acts 2. And I got, we'll do this real quick. Acts 2. Remember what he make his angels. Acts 2. We just want a couple of verses out of there. Acts chapter 2 and then we'll go to James 5. Acts the second chapter 10 there. When you get it, verse 1. Go ahead and read. Acts 2 and 1. Go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Uh -huh. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Yes. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire uh -huh. set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So sisters and brothers, these were a flock of angels that were sent on the day of Pentecost in the upper room. We got lessons on that to show you more perfectly. We have the day of Pentecost lesson to show you that these are angels because these make us angels, ministers of the flame of fire. It was the angel that followed in the pillar in the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. It was the angel that Moses saw in the burning bush that instructed him because they are sent to heirs of salvation. Wow. Man, let's go, my brother, to James the five. And I hope somebody got something out of just a little something to put something on your mind, sisters and brothers, for us to behave ourselves. Right. Because the eyes of the Lord are in every place. In That's every right. place, beholding the good and the evil. James 5 and 13, when you get it. Go ahead, my brother. Good lesson, my brother. Praise God. Is any among you afflicted? Yes. Let him pray. Yes. Is any married? Yes. Let him sing psalms. Yes, sir. Is any sick among you? Uh -huh. Let him call for the elders of the church. Yes. Let them pray over him. Yes. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yes. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Yes. So confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Yes. And he may be healed. Yes. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Man, my brother, close us out, Tenzel. Close us out. Thank Our you. Father. Thank you, sister, brother, for joining us. Come on, close us out. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On behalf of my brother Tenzel, brother Sean, and myself, bless the Sabbath to each and every last one of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, good night. Good night.